Hello and welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And I'm Ken Decker. And I'm Ryan Decker. Great. And so today, Ryan, what are we going to talk about? We got a treat for you today. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about investing and uh, different ways to get educated. Investing and... like stocks and bonds? And well, we can touch on that. <laughs> However, sure, we'll, we'll hit that first. <laughs> um, when we talk about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, um, we're not going to say they're bad or they're wrong. However, they are sold a lot. A lot of people, that's their main investment, sometimes their only investment. And I went to school for uh, investments. And through school, I decided that this is not what I want to help people with. I want to help them with real estate because the model is more effective, you can earn more money, it's more reliable, it's more stable. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is you went to school for three years yep. <laughs> to learn about business finance and Absolutely. investment finance and understand bonds and junk bonds and yield bonds and, mm -hmm. and uh, stocks and mutual funds and, and uh, actually be able to sell that kind of product. That's right. And then you decided, what? Not a chance. Not for me. I sent you to school for three years. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, costly that was good, for both of us. No, it was a good education. <laughs> <laughs> it's only costly if you don't learn something from it. That's true. So you decided real estate was a, a, a great avenue to augment what people are doing in those other areas. Absolutely. Because I think people find that uh, they've been sold a lot of bill of goods around the stock market and mutual mm -hmm. funds. As my grandmother always said, don't invest in the stock market unless you're willing to lose that money. So you only put in the stock market mm -hmm. money that was uh, surplus, really. Mm -hmm. And that attitude has changed over the years. Yes, because in the, I don't even know when it was, 70s, 80s, they introduced mutual funds. Mm -hmm. And mutual funds is just a, a mutual group of people putting money into a group of companies and mm -hmm. buying stocks in those companies. Now the premise is that the people operating the mutual fund have more brain power and smarter mm -hmm. and more research teams that they can pick the companies that they want to invest in yep. better than we could. And what's interesting is they often do make a little more than an index fund. And after Hold on, hold on. What's an index fund? Uh oh. An <laughs> index fund is a group of um, mutual, sorry, of stocks all put together. It's the index of the market. So it's like the S and P five hundred. You, you yeah. buy stocks in all the companies that yeah. are there. Yeah. Okay. And it it will do a little bit less than what the the smart people are predicting and some what they're of the choosing. smart people. Some of not all. Uh -huh. And once you take off their fee, it's about mm -hmm. the same. But the same or, or less. What I've read is yeah. uh, you do better with an index fund than a managed fund. Yeah, just because the fees are so high. And unfortunately, if you're making money or not, your investment specialist is making money. Right. So you're going to put some money in the stock market because I believe in, in putting your money in multiple baskets. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem was that the sale was, well, if you buy different types of mutual funds and they're in all different companies, then you're protected. But they're all in that one basket. Mm -hmm. And so you got different types of eggs. You got ostrich eggs, you got mm -hmm. chicken eggs, you got robin's eggs, you got all kinds of things. But that basket, when the stock market falls, all you got is scrambled eggs. Yeah. It's, it's still diversified, just not enough. Right. It's, they're still correlated together. Um, whereas so keep some money in there. Keep some money in there. Not but, but look at real estate as a, as a as second your alternative. Or mortgages even, yeah. lending money. When, when you look at what the stock market is doing, often if the stock market's coming down, house prices are going up. And the opposite is the same as well. If house prices are going down, often the stock market's going up. Uh, it's just correlated that way. Wow. And so if you're looking for two different things that are... You Unless know, we're in a total bust and, and yeah. everything's going down. If you're in a total bust, <laughs> everything's going down. Except love. <laughs> Okay. Love goes up. Yeah, well, you'll need that to keep you <laughs> yeah, warm because you absolutely. won't be able to afford the gas prices that have been going up like crazy. Maybe you want to have stocks and gas prices. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe. Okay. And uh, so, anyways, that that's the stock market in a nutshell. Okay. I won't talk too much more on that today. Okay. So, so real estate is something that a lot of people are afraid to get into. Mm -hmm. Although most people that own a house have already accidentally started building mm -hmm. wealth. 
by owning a piece of real estate that's yeah. going up in value. Not super fast, but it's going up in value. Plus, it's a place you can live because Absolutely. you can't live in a mutual fund. No, you really can't. You really can't. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you live in your house. It goes up in value. Now, the beauty is you can multiply that by buying other houses. By leveraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's neat is without leverage, I know many, many elderly people that have lived there for you know the last 40 years. It's been paid off. And uh, they've got some money saved, but they're burning through it. And then for the later part of the years, it's actually the most expensive because they need to move to a retirement home or uh, need some health, um, not health care, but health, uh, I'm out with a word. Support. Support. Thank mm -hmm. you. And so they sell their house and they're able to use that big asset that's there to fund that later part of their life. That's not my preference. Mm -hmm. That's just saying that a lot of people knew that real estate had value mm -hmm. and they bought it early enough and kept it. So grandma and, bought it at $20,000 and it's now worth paid it off over 20 years and, and 25 years. Yeah. And yeah. And Your so point. she's got something there. And if we look at you know what the market should do over the next 25 years because of the history, we should see a similar growth. So in 25 years from now, your 300,000 should be worth almost a million bucks. Right. Which you know if it's fully paid off, that's that's a good chunk of change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even with inflation. Yeah, being a millionaire is not quite as impressive as it <laughs> used to be. No, not quite as impressive. <laughs> with inflation. And then so we can take that model, which is a strong model, and leverage it. Okay, talk to me about leverage. So, I know leverage from physics is you okay. put, you got a fulcrum and you, you put a big stick and if you're on the big side you can lift something heavier. Yeah, right? that's right. And so with real estate, we like to use other people's money. That's okay. the saying, OPM, other people's money, not <laughs> okay. the drug. Not the drug. And uh, okay. the cheapest form is usually from a bank. All right. One, because they're only going to loan to you if you're very secure and mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. And they'll only go to a certain percent of the home value. And uh, they do a lot of it. So for your first investment property, if it's, if it's like a townhouse or mm -hmm. a single home or something, uh, you could get a mortgage at going rate that you would get on your principal residence. Yeah. It might be the going rate or slightly above. It'll be very, very close. Okay. And if you move into uh, you know commercial or five unit plus uh, mm -hmm. residential, then your interest rate will go yeah. up with the bank. So, so I know that the real estate market over the last sixty years. Yeah. Well, let's let's go let's back that back a bit. Let's go the last twenty years. Has averaged about five point five percent. The in Ottawa. Yeah, in Ottawa, the stock market. If I look at the S and P five hundred, mm -hmm. which is uh, um, the kind of that stock index we were talking about, it actually was a little bit better. It's around 6.25%. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, if you reinvest your... No, that is with yes, reinvesting. Yeah, with reinvesting of your dividends, it runs around that 6.25 or 6.2. Yep. So on the surface, that looks like a better a, investment a better than real estate that's going up at 5.5. Mm -hmm. Now... Bust that myth for me. All right. Well, I'll bust it in a few ways. Without leverage, and yeah. let's say I went and bought a $300,000 unit cash, just paid for it, or I went and got a $300,000 worth of stocks. Okay. Okay, either or. Um, with the house, I will have a tenant, which will be paying me uh, for that kind of a house about 1500 a month. Okay. And of that, 6000 a year will be paying down your mortgage. Yeah, but you said we didn't have a mortgage. Oh, right. So that's even better. So <laughs> that being said, you're going to get, of that 1500 probably uh, about 1200 a month cash. Okay. Which on your, you know, 300000 what is that? That's uh, well, 14400 a, a year. Yeah. Plus, it's going to go up your 5.5% mm -hmm. if history repeats itself. We can't guarantee the future, but yeah. history is the best indicator. So 5.5% on 300,000, that's, uh, let's say 5% even, let's yeah, round let's it down. Yeah, let's move it down. So you're at 15, so that's 15 plus you're 144. So you're at almost 10% if you owned it outright. Because it's close to $30,000. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. So if you buy that house, because you can rent it, you got cash flow there, 
you got equity growth. Mm -hmm. So you're running 10% compared to the 6.2. Well, that's making it look better already. It's making it look better already. But can we make it look even better? We can make it look way better. <laughs> okay, how do we do that? And so if we were to buy this home at 300,000, let's say 20% down. So okay. you need 60,000, not 300, because not everyone, I know it's surprising, doesn't have 300 <laughs> really? saved in their bank account today. Okay. And so, you know, you save, you save, you got that 60, and you go buy your first property. You're first gonna, investment. Property. First investment. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a mortgage, and part right. of your rental uh, payment will go towards that mortgage. Right. And so you'll probably cash flow zero. So that so extra money every even. month, we're you're not getting We're just going to break any. even on the cash yep. flow? Absolutely. So that would reduce our... Our rate of return, right? You'd think so, but oh, okay. no, it doesn't. It increases it. And the reason is you don't have uh, 300000 in. You only have sixty. And if the property went up 15000 and you've paid 6000 So that's the 5% on that's the 5 300. On the 300. 15000 yeah. And you've got 6000 in mortgage pay down. And how'd all, you get that number? Because I know it off heart. Yeah, but how'd you get it? <laughs> um, so you have your... <laughs> Let's say twelve hundred a month in your mortgage, mortgage payment. payment. Yeah. The other three hundred is going towards taxes, insurance, right? Those sort of things. Um, of that six hundred will be sorry. Of the twelve hundred, six hundred will be interest. Okay. And the other six hundred will be paying down the principal on your house. Okay. Or five hundred because five hundred. It would be about five hundred yeah. in the first year. It actually goes up each. It year. It goes up every year. Mm -hmm. So you got five hundred mortgage pay down. But who's paying that twelve hundred on the mortgage? Your tenant. The tenant is. The tenant is. So the five hundred it's like him putting or him or she or whoever putting five hundred into my bank account Absolutely. every month. Every month. So I gotta add that to my rate of return. Mm hmm Okay. And so, so if you have your fifteen thousand yeah. and your six thousand from your mortgage pay down. Right. You're okay. at twenty one. Twenty one thousand. And if you've invested sixty because mm -hmm. you didn't invest 300 mm -hmm. only 60 what's your rate of return? Uh, that would be around 33%. It's just over 33% in the first year. Wow. Wow. A little wow. bit better than 6.2, no? Yeah. yeah. 33 is pretty cool. 33 is pretty cool. So what's interesting is this will go down every year. It won't continue to go up because you're, as you pay down your mortgage and as your equity goes up, you have less leverage. Right. So I've got more equity, more more invested, really. Absolutely. And so I'm still getting a great mm -hmm. amount of money back. Same, actually, more money each year. More money each but year. But because I have more invested, the compounding effect slows down. It, it's uh, lower. Mm -hmm. So what would it be in the second year, roughly? Goes to about 27, and then 25, and 23, and then about 20. Okay. And so on the last year, I think it's 17 or 15. On the after fifth five year, years. after five years. Okay. So still way better than. 10% if I bought the Way place better. outright. Yep. Now, eventually, I guess, if I pay the entire mortgage off, it's going to run at about that 10%. It'll go back to that 10. Okay. All right. And, and so rate of return is important? Rate of return is very important. Uh, if anyone knows the rule of 72, that is you take 72 divided by the rate of return you're getting, that's how many years it will take to double your money. Okay. So... With the interest rate going down a little bit, or not the interest rate, but the rate of return going down a little bit in subsequent years, starting at 33, ending at 17, probably we're talking, I don't know, three years or so for our money to double? Like uh, our 60000 to become 120? Yeah, 33% you'd be about three years um, to double. However, to be able to take out your money and reinvest it takes roughly five years okay as long as the market does what we say it's going to do and right. once you hit that five-year point you can re-leverage and go back to the 33 percent and what do you mean re-leverage and so if i have a home i've got 20 percent down because that's what i paid for it because mm -hmm. it's not my personal residence it is it's an investment yep and then i maybe take even 25 now maybe some, even some 25 of the, some of the they're making it tougher on us yeah. Which is okay. <laughs> Some lenders are still 20, others are 25. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you take that 20, you leave it in after the five years because you want to keep the property, you don't want to sell it. And you take the increase, which will be about 20% again on the new value. Mm -hmm. So let's say after five years it's worth 360. So you're going to okay. need 20% of that to stay, 20% mm -hmm. to go and buy another property. And right. now you have two. Okay. Doing both 33% the first so, year. So it's kind of like a shell game we had. We had a whole bunch of equity in one, and we took out 
part part or half of it half, moved roughly. it to another one now we got two of these things earning 33 mm -hmm. percent again Absolutely. that's powerful that's huge without investing any more in my with personal no more money? money and if you well, have more money to invest then you can speed up the process okay and get you know maybe you saved another 60 go get another home or pay down my own mortgage yeah. and borrow from put a line of credit on that which is tax deductible now if it's for being used as property. the down payment on another mm -hmm. investment property so called waking up your lazy asset which is <laughs> your your house if your house is fully paid for and it's making that 5% 5.5 why not wake up a little bit of it and, and leverage it? Go get not, not a lot of it, because not people have to be able to sleep at night, right? Absolutely. And we don't want anybody to over leverage and get worried about money or anything like that. And the reason we advocate this is because the real estate market in Ottawa has been so stable. Mm -hmm. it's so stable. Slow to rise, slow to fall, and your risk factor is reduced significantly. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you just joined us, this is the inside track on real estate. And today I'm interviewing Ryan Decker on uh, really investments and, and what, uh, what to look for. Like why, why is investing in real estate a great choice? Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually run a investment workshop yeah. uh, the second Thursday of each month. And you can call 613-860-4663. Mm -hmm. And register for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we answer all the questions. We give all kinds of great information. We might even have a property to, or two there that might be a great mm -hmm. purchase Investment. for for an investor. And how else could they find out about great properties that would be good investments? So once a week, every week, I put out a video called My Investment Pick of the Week. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing homes every day. And I pick the one that I know will sell this week because it's such a great deal. Okay. Or if I can't find one because there's not one every week, we pick a learning. So we explain cap rate or we explain um, something about investing so you're prepared when right. the one you want comes up. So you find this property yeah, and we, that you think is a good value. Either good value. either it's a multi-unit or it might be a townhouse or could anything. Could be a fixer-upper. Anything that you be, think would be a good rental property. Yeah. And then you create a video on it, you said? And then I create a How video. How do you do that? Well... I have brilliant staff that helps me with that. <laughs> and so we create this video and we send it out once a week. If you want to register for that, again, call 613-860-4663. That's 613-860-4663. And ask to be put on the Investment Property of the Week video. So, so it comes out as an email link. An email link. You just click on the link and it has a little video of you. Mm -hmm. And you are running the spreadsheet on a Showing computer. So they see a little picture of you in the corner. That's right. They see a picture of the house and then they see your spreadsheet come mm -hmm. up on the computer. It's kind of a computer capture kind of yeah. program. program. And it's really cool. So Thank if you, you. want to see it, call 613-860-4663 and ask to be put on uh, the investment of the week video program and we'll be happy to set you up on that. Absolutely. Or come to the Wealth Building Workshop. It's great. We talked briefly about how to position yourself to be ready to invest in real estate. And then we talk about the advantages of investing in real estate mm -hmm. and the pitfalls. And the pitfalls. Yeah. And we talk about, because, you know, a lot of people go, ooh, I don't want to be a landlord. Mm -hmm. I've heard the horror stories out the there. Horror! <laughs> horror stories. Because they're the things that are sensational Absolutely. to talk about, right? I don't talk about the house that I've had for 20 years. I've had great tenants in it. They always pay. Mm -hmm. They never damage it. They leave it in better condition than what I gave it to mm -hmm. them in. And it's paid off the place and I've made a ton of money. You don't hear those stories because people don't talk about their successes quite yeah. the same as they do. They don't want to be boastful or seen, you know, as different. Or, um, mm -hmm. So often people are willing to share, you know, I had this tenant and he... You know, and they go on. And I've got horror stories, and I love them. They're fun to tell. You know, at parties, you can wow people. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I've also got really great stories. Yeah. We're, we're presently giving a little bit of advice to uh, a landlord who, who let it slide too long. Mm. And their tenant owes them about $10,000 because they didn't give the proper notices as soon as they started being laid on their, on their rent. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think you can't kick someone out in the winter. You can. As a matter of fact, when they're one day late on the rent, you can give them their eviction notice, their 15-day eviction notice, and uh, they have to bring the rent up to uh, up to square. 
or you can go to court and they give a court order for them to be evicted and the sheriff comes and changes the locks and they're out. Mm -hmm. So really within 30 days, typically, you can, you can have a tenant out if they're not paying the rent. Absolutely. And it's probably a good idea because typically the ones that don't pay the rent mm -hmm. Also trash the place. Yeah, often. it's a double whammy. It is a double whammy. <laughs> so. And what's what's really cool is I have a lot of clients that you know want to invest in real estate. They want to see the return, but they don't want to be a landlord. They don't have the okay. time. They don't have the energy. So do we have a solution for that? We absolutely have a great solution. Okay. Which is a property manager, right. and they're going to help you find the tenant. They're going to look after the tenant. They're going to collect your rent for you. They're going to help you pay the expenses. They're going to make sure everything is followed. Mm -hmm. To a T. It does cost money, so your rate of return will go down. However, it's hassle-free now. And if they need to evict, your uh, manager will do that. So it's kind of like having the a little less rate of return on your mutual fund because mm -hmm. you got a manager. Absolutely. Now you got a manager of your real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. It has a little less return, but it's less hassle, less thinking yeah. about it. Less you time, less Put your energy. money and forget it and go, go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> and we still think, you know, don't forget it totally. You still got to touch base and make yeah. sure, you know, because money that you don't watch walks away. Yeah, it gets bored. It gets bored. It grows legs and grows walks legs. away, yeah. So, you know, keep an eye on it. <laughs> don't, don't be an absentee landlord. However, a manager makes things very, very easy for the person who doesn't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's great. So, again, that number, if you would like to sign up for our wealth building workshop and learn all about investing, uh, 613-860-4663 and you might even be able to pick up an autograph book Ooh. of the wealth formula when you go there. Absolutely. Uh, yours truly will probably be there and probably that. You, you yeah, will be, I'll as be there well. as well. Yeah. And we might even have a mortgage broker there to answer all your questions about how to, how to, how to finance mm -hmm. this investment and what's the best strategy for your particular investment goals mm -hmm. because depending on how many properties you want to own you got to changes and what kind lender. of properties yeah yeah big difference excellent excellent so we have a few properties uh that we have listed that we think are awesome mm -hmm. um one of them is on river road yeah <sighs> set back off of river road it's set back it's just, back a house so you yeah. don't hear the road so backs just on, south of manatic just south of manatic okay it backs onto a farm so you don't have any rear neighbors Beautiful. Wow. Quiet birds. Quiet birds, corn, sometimes strawberries. It's very really? nice. Strawberries. Yeah. Can you sneak over and <laughs> Probably <have a> not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. We won't <laughs> advertise that. Um, okay. It's a four bedroom. Uh -huh. The master is on the main level. So great for, you know, an older couple or someone who wants to be separated from the rest of the family. Okay. So, um, you, so or three bedrooms upstairs? Three bedrooms up with one bath. Okay, and, and then, then uh, downstairs you got the uh, powder bathroom and then the ensuite for the, the big master on the main level. Okay, so great if maybe even if you've got a, a parents, uh, parents that need some assistance and absolutely. they can live on the main, main level and yeah. you live upstairs, that would work and well. And this one's priced at 400000 It's very well done. Um, great basement as well and one and a half car garage. It's wonderful. One and a half? Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of clients who like workshops. <laughs> Uh -huh. And if you tell them a one-car garage, it just doesn't do it. So you can only park one car here unless they're really little. Actually, I was but in it. I, you can get two cars. Not the big problem ones. is the door is small. Yes. But if you took out the, the uh, passage door on the side and widen it, it's, think so? it's bigger than a, a city two-car garage. that they okay. call, You know those 18-footers that you, <laughs> you, can, you can get in them, but you need a can opener to get back out of your car to, once you're in the garage? <laughs> But it, it will fit, too. Uh, but the door is a single door. It is. And it, lots of space. It's pretty deep, too. So yep. if you want to keep your lawnmower and different back. things in there. So that's awesome. That's a great property. And only 400000 Only 400 Wow. Call today. Wow. <laughs> Operators are standing by? Operators are standing what by. What number? <laughs> we'll, we'll say that in a minute. <laughs> and then I've got a nice property I want to mention. It's out uh, in the edge of Canada on the west side of Canada on Steeple Chase. Oh. And it's a beautiful home, four bedroom, uh, hardwood floors on the main level, mm -hmm. a sunken family room that's two story tall. So it's got kind of that, um, the hallway has the, the kind of balcony hallway on mm -hmm. the second floor. So you look down onto the nice. family room, a uh, large two car garage for the city. For the city. And it's on a corner lot, which really gives it a lot of width the property is very, very wide. 
Very nice home, very well maintained. Uh, that's on at a super price. That's four bedrooms, four large bedrooms upstairs. That's on at four seventy-five. Wow! In the city, uh, great, great property there. Yeah, and so uh, yeah. If you want to know about these properties, come to the investment seminar <laughs> or subscribe to the uh, investor. Well, could they just not the call us and they find out about us. them? Because these, these are great properties. Give us a call, 613-860-4663. Even if these properties don't spark your interest, we have access to all the properties on the MLS, which mm -hmm. is over 7,000 properties. So if you think we can't find you a property that suits your needs, you're wrong. <laughs> we can. And, you know, of course, you have to make it in the budget that you have Absolutely. for your finances. Uh, we even still have access to some... Uh, uh, gifted down payment type programs or zero downs or 5% uh, down. Uh, there's lots of programs to help people get into their first home. Mm -hmm. uh, great time to uh, even remove RSP money from your RSP. Uh, up to 25000 per person you can remove for your down payment on your first home. So that's a great program. We discussed those at our, at our buyer workshop. workshop which you can register as well, Same third, way. third Thursday of each month. Uh, the phone number again, 613-860-4663. And, you know, you can ask for Ryan, you can ask for Ken, you can ask for Yetta. Or Candace. Or you can ask for Candace. You're getting over 50 years of experience with the Decker team. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Family feels like run business. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> feels like 100. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I bring the majority of that yeah. to the team. Actually, yeah, it does, but we won't, <laughs> we won't talk about that. Um, yeah, so if you want an experienced team that has got expertise all over the city in investment properties, condos, freeholds, Farms, commercial land. property, development, we cover the whole gamut with our team. And just give us a call. We'd love to assist you. Phone number is 613-860-4663. And that's all the time we've got for today. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.